All right, so let's continue. So we were at this point. Let's first maybe stop the program and start it over. So F11, F11, F11. So P graph is initialized to be null. Very good. F11, which is step into. Co-initialize, succeeded. And then we're calling throw if error, but HR is okay. It's zero, so it's not less than zero, I should say. So we're skipping over the if. Back to our win main function, back from throw if error. We're going to call now co create instance F11. And again, SOK succeeded. And the p graph variable is now pointing at an allocation that co-create instance returned. So p graph is pointing at this object, which is a com object. Basically, what we can see here is that it's we're pointing at again we're pointing at an object which is of type i filter graph which inherits from an object w w which inherits from an i unknown which inherits from uh which implements which implements these three functions which we're not going to get into right now but in any case, what we have is a p graph pointer, which is of type i filter graph, which means that we we'll, we will be able to do things with it. And that's basically the next thing we're going to do. Now, hr returned is s okay, so f10 I can skip over it, and f10 now. Uh, we allocated p graph so we need to deallocate it and one of the functions that p graph implements being an i filter graph be, being an i unknown one of these functions cannot tell which one but is the release function and this is a com notion that com objects are responsible for their own uh, release, for their own dis destruction. Um, so we invoke release and I'm not going to get too much into it right now. Maybe later we'll discuss a little bit of what we need. In any case, so since P graph has been allocated and since we know that we allocated it so it's our responsibility to release it to invoke release so we invoke release and basically now this p graph pointer should not be used it it's usually a good idea to also reinitial not reinitialize but reset it to zero or to null after we release it. It's a good idea in case we're in a loop and um, and we might reuse the pointer so if if we keep it at a non null value we wouldn't know that it, we actually finished using it. So this is how we denote to ourselves that we finished using it so that we don't end up use, reusing it because as far as we're concerned, it, sh it should have been destroyed. All right. So F10 or F11, co-initialize. It says here, applying code changes. Code changes were applied successfully. Very nice. And we're returning the SOK, the last SOK that co-create instance returned to us. And F5, and we're finished. So, so what do we have up until now? So let's go again back to our introduction. So again, you could say all we have built is the gray, is the gray stuff. Is something that we can, 
is a platform on which it's really more than a platform, it's a manager component that we can use in order to build this graph of components. Now when I say graph, this is also a technical, a technical term, the graph, but they, the, the direct show documentation and the direct show team that built, that designed the library, they, they called this concept a graph because what you have is some sort of, right, in, in graph theory in mathematics, don't get scared, but what you have is the concept of a node and, a, and an arrow connecting or, or a connection between two nodes. So, uh, so um, in direct show, what we have is is graphs because we have nodes that are connected, and um, so that's why it's called a graph. Uh, notice, right? We'll, we'll come back to this notion many times where you're going to understand this notion of a graph and filters and connections and the pins that connect two filters very well. In any case, what we have now is the manager with which we're going to uh, with which we're going to work. We're going to request the manager to build for us this graph and to run the graph and this manager is going to ultimately uh, allow us to enjoy the movie. Okay, so back to the code. Very nice and back to the MSDN, back to the example that we're building in the MSDN. So we have here, so we invoke this block of code and you can read here what it says. Um, I, I don't, um, right now I'm not saying something fascinating that I want to discuss with you. In any case, the next step is to ask the pgraph object to expose two more interfaces. But you know what? What I think that we're going to, for now, we're going to skip this because I'll soon discuss why. The next step that I'd like to do is simply tell pgraph, since we just got pgraph, we can now ask it to render a file. We can give it the path to a file and we can ask it to render the file. Now what does it mean to render a file? Good question. So back to the diagram. To render a file is we, we, can, uh, we can tell the pgraph, the graph manager, we can, we can tell it, listen, here is the path, here is a path to a file on the disk. Now I would like you to render the file. What does it mean to render the file? To render the file means build the complete graph. Nothing short of please build for me this complete graph. That's what I'm going that's what render file means. So the graph manager is going to build for us this graph and all that's going to be left for us to do after it renders the file, which means build the graph that will play the file, the next step for us to do is to ask the graph manager, now that you've built the graph, now play the file or play the graph, the same thing. We can ask it to play it, we can ask it to pause it, we can ask it to stop. That's basically the, the three basic things that we can ask it to do. We'll learn more things later. But the first thing we'd like to do is ask the graph manager to build the graph for the file in order to play the file. And after that, we'll ask it to play the file. And that's basically what we see over here, but in reverse. I don't know why they reverse the order. The first thing we'd like to do is ask the pgraph, which is the graph manager, right? The pgraph is actually or a graph builder. I should say graph builder, not graph manager. So we, we want to ask the graph builder that we allocated, we would like to ask it 
to render the file and we would like to give it a file alright so we need a file but let's first take this code we'll talk about creating a file uh, soon enough alright so let's copy I'm copying this line of code so once we have created the P graph now I would like to ask it control V to render a file let me copy this line control C control V control X copies the throw if error perfectly excuse me the next thing we need to do well first of all let's use F6 to see that very good the build has been successful let's run it I'm pretty sure I do not have an example .avi file on my C partition I'm pretty sure so we should be getting an error for HR and this would be a good time to also test our throw if error function alright so let's run through this code F11 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 F10 F11 F10 and F11 let's see HR so HR is negative 214 702 all right it's very difficult to know what this error is now before we invoke our throw if error function and actually see the error you know what let's first <laughs> let's first uh, invoke it using F um, even F10 first let's use F10 let's see how throw if error responds F10 is skip over we're gonna try and skip over the throw if error function but it should throw an exception and it should let's see what it does f10 oh it skips right to the catch oh very good and f10 we're going to tear down the graph and we're going to call co uninitialized all right that's very nice let's go back again to render file well after once we tore and co uninitialized though if we want to restart so let's click here right button click and X that causes the yellow arrow to go back but before we run it again and before we dis and discuss and dissect these two lines of code and actually go through throw if error for the first time I'd like to stop here um, and we'll continue this in the next lecture so thank you very much and I'll see you then